Kenya Barris, I'm sick of you. I don't really talk about you, <laughs> but I'm sick of you. Do you know how hard you have to work to make Eddie Murphy unfunny in a comedy? And Joni Hill and Lauren London, if y'all ain't want to be up on each other like that, y'all should have hired somebody else. I don't want to hear nothing about the COVID restrictions. No, uh, CGI kisses? Really? There was already zero chemistry off the back the entire run of the movie. You people. guys welcome back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss you people now this movie is from 2023 and it stars jonah hill and lauren london now before i get into all things a waste of a good cast space time production and money i need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video i'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss you know, I really feel like this movie meant to be progressive and informative when all it really did was set us back every other scene. Go back, 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 back. guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the movie i want to discuss kenya barris just for a moment because i've never talked about him or any of his movies or shows on the channel kenya barris has been around behind the scenes for a minute as far as writing and being on production and that's for shows like girlfriends america's next top model soul food the game working his way up to where he can now have a spotlight given to him for his own shows but you would never feel a sense of longevity or growth or diversity in his writing according to what he has given us so far now I'm sure like myself, many of you probably met Kenya Barris through the show Blackish, which was very, very successful on ABC, went on for eight seasons, had a plethora of awards. I got into the show a little bit, but I could never really fully commit, even though it is considered his best work. There was something always about the writing that, you know, even though we were seeing this black family on screen, I never really had a sense that this show was for me then this was more so a show geared towards being digestible and palatable for a white audience and of course <laughs> this is ABC and it's really crazy to think that because uh, Blackish is totally the modernized version of the Cosby show but there was always something that connected me to the Cosby show or connected everybody collectively universal to the Cosby show and it didn't have to pander to one particular audience. So even when we do have Blackish bring up things like police brutality, texturism, colorism, just racism overall, it being disingenuous and that the writing was just meant to inform a certain demographic, then just really give us a great show because I would find myself trying to watch Blackish and I'm like, who are they talking to? Like, I already know these things. Are this is this is just not for me. I never got the same feeling that I would get watching the Cosby show, watching, you know, the Hughleys, or watching something older like the Jeffersons. But it was absolutely okay. I still watched, I still supported. And then I don't always just go for Kenya Barris because I know that he has to answer to someone. He is a part of a network and it's all about performing numbers, you know, the charge. Blackish did very, very well. And when we do have shows that try to give diversity or a different narrative or genre, you know, our The Get Downs, The Underground, Lovecraft Country, The Carmichael Show, She's Gotta Have It, they all get canceled. And we are lucky if we can get two seasons of these shows. 
So when I tell you I was understanding and I was chilling with Blackish, I even went on to support Grownish that wants so badly to be our modern day a different world. But that show is light years ahead of Grownish as far as storytelling, character development, and social commentary. It is very much so surface level and stylized, but it's cool. But this is around the time that the writing really started to lack for me. And you also really get into there not being a dark skin character in sight. A lot of the writing for the shows give, you know, sound bites from Twitter, gives pandering, and it just comes off as forced and a little fake. And then we get into when we do maybe have a dark skinned female character anywhere, they don't have anything to work with, anything to say, and they are just filling up space in the show which is why I am sure with this past season of Grownish, we were sure to find a beautiful dark skinned girl and make her a main character within the show and really give her something to do. It only took six seasons. And then we get into him not only creating Blackish, but we got Grownish, we got Mixedish, we got Black AF, and we got things like the Cheaper by the Dozen remake. We really got into his writing feeling forced, one trick pony and in internalizing his very own themes that he has in his household. I'm a black man, I am married to a white woman and we have mixed children. So that's all I want to make the conscious decision to portray, which is all fine and dandy because representation matters. But at a certain point, you know, maybe five shows in, it's kind of giving eraser. Long gone are the days of a Moesha, a Kim Parker, a Laura Winslow, a Vanessa, a Kimberly Reese, Brenda Jenkins, maybe a Tanya. And notice I only mention black girls and black women because fortunately in films and TV, black boys get to be just that. But when it comes to black women in all things media, we rarely get to be the main focus unless we are cut from the same biracial mold as a Tracy Ellis Ross or Rashida Jones, Yara Shahidi, Zendaya, Zoe Kravitz, Lauren London being at the forefront of it. And it just works my nerves <laughs> that it seems like he is going the lazy route, you know, working what works and really has no intentions of saying or presenting anything else. Even though he clearly has the money, the platform, and the opportunity to do so. But you know, we got Coming to America, the Cheaper by the Dozen remake, <laughs> the Witches remake, the Up and Coming White Man Can't Jump remake, and right now we have You People. Let's talk about it. Now getting into you people, I did not expect a whole lot going in outside of the promise of it hopefully being funny and there may be being a chance because it seemed to have a good cast. But I didn't expect Kenya Barris or Jonah Hill to reinvent the wheel with the writing. We have seen the concept of interracial dating or marriage, you know, two families becoming a blended one from different, you know, cultural backgrounds. We discuss racial themes and there's themes of of acceptance we get this to maybe a comedic beat with maybe movies like lovebirds our family wedding guess who my big fat greek wedding and then we have the more dramatic movies where we have interracial couples or marriages face adversity like guess who's coming to dinner loving jungle fever mississippi masla or the joy luck club now let's just lay the groundwork before we go in the acting directing cinematography writing, pacing, storytelling is absolutely terrible. Tragic, tragic in this movie. We meet Ezra here portrayed by Jonah Hill. He is Jewish, down, cool, and for the culture. From his bestie, to his podcast, to his fashions, to his taste in music. Not one woman seems to understand him until he meets Amira Muhammad, a black woman from a Muslim black ground, and they just instantly bond and get each other. From, you know, the shoes, to the music, the fried chicken at Roscoe's, all oh, the montage of it all, this picturesque loving situation, we found love in a hopeless place. 
That is until their parents test their union and commitment to each other, constantly incorporating and clashing in cultures, heritage, just backgrounds overall. Constantly trying to push their own beliefs and views onto their own children, all of this back and forth bickering. You trying to say your struggle is more valid than ours? Like, oh, it was, it was tired. It was so tired. These things put their beautiful union in jeopardy. And I'm being really sarcastic when I say their beautiful union because where was the chemistry? I've never seen chemistry lack so much in a film between two characters. With the script being tired and us not really being given a true concept of time, how long they have really been together, really low-key beelining their relationship so we can get into all of the other side plots, the writing is just really poor. So the chemistry had to be really strong to make us as an audience root for Amara and Ezra at all. When I tell you Lauren London and Jonah Hill have about as much chemistry as two strangers sitting on a public transportation bus who don't want to rub shoulders. Like, I don't know what was going on, but everything was just so off. It felt forced and it felt awkward. It just felt wrong. They looked fake and uncomfortable as a couple, so it made me uncomfortable as a viewer. And it was just this sense of, Ugh, how long do we have to be here? No montage, no little hee 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 hees underneath the blanket was gonna help that situation. They did not sell it for me at all. In any of the scenes that they had together, I did not care about them ending up together. In turn, I did not care about the movie. The whole point is for us to care about them ending up together and getting married. <sighs> and another thing, <laughs> Black clearly does not crack and neither does Julia Dreyfus. We really needed some younger people to betray Ezra and Amara. Like, why does Jonah Hill look like an older sibling, brother, relative to his parents? Like, it just looks so awkward. They looked either the same age or at times he looked older than they did. Eddie Murphy still looks very youthful. Nia Long still looks very young. In turn, Nia Long and Lauren London look like they could be related. More so older sister, younger sister vibes, not mother daughter. It just looked off in my opinion. Speaking of looking off, let's get into them casting Lauren London to be Nia Long and Eddie Murphy's daughter. They did the same hit and guess who? Now don't get me wrong, it is possible for two darker skinned parents to produce a lighter eyed or lighter complected child but majority of the time that is not the case why are we choosing the latter and choosing to portray dark skinned full black parents having biracial children lauren London is biracial she is half jewish like Oh Lord. Then they tried to, you know, throw in that little throwaway line from Eddie, you know, if it wasn't for your ancestors throwing in that white blood, we wouldn't be here. My babies wouldn't be cream colored. Go to hell. We just absolutely wasted our cast here on all fronts. You know that your movie and the writing is poor when the likes of Nia Long, Eddie Murphy, Julia Drake, Mike Epps cannot save your film and make it funny. Like, let's not even get into the disrespect of having Nia Long here and giving her nothing to do, nothing to say, and she is just pretty much on set dressing to fill in the scene. <sighs> Eddie Murphy here has absolutely no depth as a character and is phoning in his performance the same way he did in coming to America. It is so disappointing to see, but it wouldn't have helped anyway because the writing is just so tragic. Dressed in all black, giving Muslims a bad name, trying so hard to be pro-black that we become the racist in the film. Ugh, it was so draining. We were spending so much time being, I'm black of the black, black of the black, black of the black, of the black because I'm black and I'm back, that we forgot about jokes. <laughs> Where were the freaking jokes? Everybody here is just non-existent, not present, doesn't, you know, feel like a real person, feels more like a character than actual full real people even when we get into Julia Dreyfus character like being the tone deaf out of pocket 
Ooh, can I touch your hair? Ooh, I have a black friend. Oh, I know black people. I voted for Obama as whiteness, microaggression pushing Karen, who doesn't really know how to read the room. Could have actually went far. There are a whole lot of women like this, but we run the gag and we run her character into the ground. Playing at her being unaware as the gag and the joke was never funny. And it's the same thing with Eddie Murphy's character. Like, this never felt like a real movie or scenario to me. This felt more like somebody's skit, SNL, Mad TV, Black Lady Sketch comedy show. It was just all tired. The predictable, lazy, lowbrow comedy of it all. Like, the fact that somebody thought Carisha's wig being pulled off was gonna be funny or you know accidentally burning a uh, coffee and trying to stump it out to death or just assuming hey just because Ezra is a white man he couldn't possibly play basketball or know how to conduct himself in a barbershop Ugh. Ezra taking the black parents to Roscoe's chicken and waffles Eddie scheming the entire time trying to find a flaw within him you know the bachelor party the weird coke jokes Oh, don't even get me started on the tire, you know, car ride. And we are trying to see if we can get Ezra to say the N word in correlation with, you know, niggas and pairs. Like, it's so provocative. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I just became increasingly irritated with this movie. Now, of course, if you suffered and made it to the ass end of this movie, everything still feels completely unearned them breaking up feeling like you know we're never gonna agree on anything i'm never gonna be good enough for your father your mother's never gonna understand anything like let's just separate at uh, which we have the parents in the end have this big revelation and them separate for months but instantly come back together and get married in the cgi kiss of it all like it was just tired this is definitely not anything that i would go and watch again and I am not expecting, you know, Kenya or, you know, other Black people who are in the movie realm to just give something profound and groundbreaking every single time they decide to write or touch a camera. But can it be funny? Can we get things that make sense? Can we have a good time with the film, with the characters? Like, can we utilize things that we should utilize and make it a movie? <sighs> you people. Well, you guys, that was my review for you people. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me if you did. Have you seen it? Did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? Or did you share some of the same sentiments I did? I look forward to reading you guys' comments. Thank you so much for supporting me and watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share all of that good stuff because it helps me out severely. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.